depending upon the severity of your case with cerebral palsy, it is a big factor on how much you're going to spend. It also has to do with, you know, how much you want to spend and how much you want to help your cerebral palsy. Because uh, if, you're, if you're okay with the way you walk or you're okay with the way you are, you're probably going to spend less than somebody who always is trying to get the top-notch surgery, the top-notch physical therapy to try to help uh, their case with cerebral palsy. Because cerebral palsy, from the way I understand it, is the way kind of your brain is connected to the way your body performs certain functions. So I mean, there's really no particular cure. So my opinion is you can kind of spend your whole life paying for surgeries and procedures and physical therapy that aren't even going to cure you completely. So what I've done is kind of don't really spend much at all on cerebral palsy at this point. But I will kind of explain economic factors, uh, other factors like raising a child with cerebral palsy. And it, it really does a lot, like I said, depend on how much you do want to spend on fixing your disability. I got to go through some hurdles that the average person wouldn't go through. Uh, so that's kind of how I look at it. And I really don't spend much now. But there are some procedures that I've gone through, some you know, physical therapy early on. Uh, and there's still some things that I think my life is different as far as financially than if I did not have cerebral palsy at all. And I'll explain all of those. So growing up, I went through physical therapy Every few months I went to a physical therapist. I learned stretching. So I suppose if you're a parent of somebody with cerebral palsy, particularly a mild case, you're probably going to want good insurance so you can get you know, your kid going to a good physical therapist. Uh, for me, I wasn't diagnosed technically until I was five. Um, so I mean, up until I was five, I really didn't even go to a neurologist, physical therapist. I remember going, doing some MRIs, doing some things. Uh, I didn't really have unusual childhood, but uh, I would say that's something you, you want to have, you know, if you're a parent of a child with cerebral palsy, it's good insurance, so you, you don't have to, you know, pay too much out of pocket for somebody with, uh, with it, for a child with cerebral palsy. But I don't think it really cost my parents much more raising me. Uh, you know, up until I was 18, it, it was basically normal, maybe a little bit more, because I had to go through physical therapy every few months. But other than that, I don't think it cost too much. So after I was 18, I think it cost maybe my parents a little bit more, uh, because I've decided to live at home for quite a while. I'm 27 now, and I still live at home. I don't think I probably would if I didn't have cerebral palsy, but you never know because just sometimes life throws you some cert certain circumstances that you you live at home so I, I don't think I would still live at home if I had cerebral palsy but fortunately I have the option to do so but um, so I, I didn't explain when when I was 18 um, I knew that I would need to have surgery because I was um, I had uh, I was in a lot of pain at work and uh, so then when I was 19 officially I had, the, I had a heel cord and hamstring lengthening surgery and this is part of the reason I don't spend much on uh, cerebral palsy uh, procedures and therapy anymore uh, because I, I've kind of learned my own routine. I, I work out regularly and uh, I do physical therapy on my own and um, the surgery was, was okay, it helped me get flat on my feet but it was not a cure, so I've kind of just come to the conclusion there is no cure for cerebral palsy, so I'm not going to waste a lot of money because it, it's hard work to make money, and someday I want to have a family, I want to, have, I want to be married, and I want to provide for my family, and I think it's more important for me to provide for my family rather than fixing the way I walk. So I do, I do someday, you know, want to do things like that rather than just spend money on myself to make my own quality of life better. I want to make quality of life better for the people that I love and cherish someday when I'm old. And I've kind of set myself up to do that by uh, living at home. I've leveraged uh, 
the way the way that I, I can do that. And um, another thing, you're you're so I've, I've kind of gone into some negative things. I suppose there were some positive things uh, as far as uh, in the first two years I went to college. I got a, a scholarship of basically a full ride, and you know. It, School was always challenging for me, so that was kind of an economic change. I don't know if I would have gone to college had I not gotten a two-year full-ride scholarship, and that was primarily because I had a disability. Had I not had a disability, I probably would have had to pay out of pocket. I might not have gone at all, so I ended up getting a degree, which was very beneficial to me. So um, in the long run, as far as cost is concerned of having cerebral palsy, so that's something that is very beneficial is having a college degree. So you're, um, so at work there's been some um, situations where, you know, I've, I've been laid off. I, I don't know if I would ever been laid off had I not had cerebral palsy. But again, that's kind of one of those situations that's gray area. Uh, I, uh, I've never really liked government assistance. I did have unemployment for a few months after I got laid off. But that was really the only sort of government assistance along with the college aid that I had uh, going into college the first two years, freshman and sophomore year. Uh, that really did benefit me in the long term because I feel like I can make more money now that I, I do have a bachelor's degree uh, because of the situation I'm in. So I, I think that maybe when, when I was, I think I was 24, 25, when I got laid off, um, it was a difficult time, but it, fortunately there, there was options of going on employment, and uh, so I was able to do that and then find a better job, and uh, I, I really like that. And uh, so there's some things that, that are hardship uh, when you work with cerebral palsy because it's more difficult for you to keep up. Uh, Definitely for me physically, some I don't know if it affects me mentally at all, the cerebral palsy, but it might. I, I do have trouble retaining information uh, that I read, and uh, everybody sort of does, but I think I'm, I'm a little more a struggle in that area as well. Could I look at learning like, uh, it's all, you're, you're similar to being a, an Olympic runner. Uh, you know, like certain people have gifts learning and uh, for me it's hard to read and focus and retain what I'm reading uh, so you know you you can easily compare a runner to somebody who's slower uh, and faster but generally intelligence it's hard to uh, gauge it how well somebody is competing uh, as far as you know retaining information but I think for me it's a little bit more difficult than maybe the average person in the workplace or the average person with a college degree, but I guess I would say probably I'm average when it comes to the entire population. But um, as far as working, because I've been laid off at a job, um, you know, maybe economically I, I could make more. I don't see benefits as far as in the workplace having cerebral palsy, especially uh, with my personality. I think I, I would probably do better walking. In, in the workplace, but you know, I, I just have to sit down because walking is not really an option uh, when you have cerebral palsy all day, every day. Uh, so, I mean, maybe economically I could have made a little bit more, but I, I think I've kind of benefited living at home with my parents. I don't know if they have, I do pay rent now, but you know, obviously it costs them a little bit more, and not every uh, parent is in that circumstance to have their child live. I plan on kind of living here until I'm 30, but uh, I don't know if every parent has that, it will, ha will allow their child to live with them until they're 30, but it's, it's something that I feel like I've benefited from because I do enjoy investing and I do enjoy uh, leveraging money to uh, make it advantageous for me in the long run. So someday if I'm unable to work, I have uh, other income other than just working so I think there's of advantages that I've that have happened for me living at home uh, but I could move out now if I wanted but I just don't want to uh, the reason I kind of choose to live here is because it's 
it's uh, physically easier, you know, difficult to live on your own. Physically, I know I would be able to do it, but it does uh, bring some challenges as far as, you know, you got to move uh, your stuff. Is, I mean, I could afford to pay, you know, moving company or, you know, my parents would help. But it's something that, that you think about and then, you know, there's uh, mowing the lawn and uh, doing just housekeep. Could I do want to own a house? I don't want to live in an apartment. Um, so, I mean, there, there's a lot of things that are associated with home ownership that uh, are physically demanding that, that would be challenging for me. So I, I want to get myself in a good situation where I don't really have to move a lot, where I basically move one time in my life. So I think by the time I'm 30, I'll, I'll be able to, you know, get, get enough, uh, you know, where I can buy a pretty decent house that I'll probably live at for the rest of my life. Uh, obviously, you never know. Certain circumstances happen that you might not see. But as far as economically with cerebral palsy, if you have a more mild case, I think your situation in life, you, you, you probably can live, you can carry your own weight. I think, I think you'll be able to uh, provide for yourself and provide for your family uh, if, if you have to, if you have a mild case. If you have a more severe case, you might need some government assistance, you, you know, you might need some other aid. If you put your mind to it, you can do basically anything, even if you do have cerebral palsy. Uh, and I, I think it's important to have that mindset to not let others get you down. Because I know it's frustrating sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll trip in public or uh, some there'll be some uncomfortable situations primarily because of my disability. It's easy to get frustrated. But it's just something that you can't do. You got to find something that really does motivate you and uh, make you more alive. Because there's a lot of people who don't get aren't motivated by what they do. It's important to be motivated by what you do.